here. It's Sew Together Tuesday. We'll wait for some people to show up and then we will get started. So thanks for coming. Um, every week we do this here on the um, Shannon Fabrics Facebook page. We have a live sewing tutorial slash class um, every Tuesday and we do different projects. So it's always at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific and uh, we'll be excited to have you here today. So thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the national educator for Shannon Fabrics. And today we are doing the mastectomy pillow is what we're doing. Um, so this project is um, a different one. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so this month, we're, or this week, we're doing a special project, sort of, um, I'm not even sure what the right word is. It's not to honor that, but because of that, we're doing it. So the mastectomy pillow, there's a bunch of variations online. Um, and the reason we chose the one we did today is because we've used it. So there have been a few people in my life and in other in our coworkers' lives who've had breast cancer including coworkers who have recommended this pillow for using after a mastectomy. So we're using this one. There's, like I said, there's lots of tutorials online. So we'll give you some insight on how to use or how to make one. And then you can choose the variation that works best for you. Okay. Um, so today we have the pattern. It's one that we have used from uh, Laura from So Very Easy, if I remember the name right. Yes. Um, and she did a video tutorial on it. I don't even know, four or five years ago? It's been a while since she did it. She did the tutorial and I used that tutorial and so did Ellen um, to make these pillows and we really liked it. So we reached out to Laura and said, you know, can we use your pattern for this? And she said, yes. So we're gonna be doing a little bit different variation on it um, from what she did. But if you want to watch hers, um, it's basically the same sort of thing. She does a couple other things that are different and she uses um, cotton exclusively and we're gonna use cotton and cuddle today, all right? So again, I'm Teresa Coates, National Educator. Welcome to Sew Together Tuesday. I'm happy that you're here. Um, make sure that you share this with people that you feel like could use it. Um, your sewing groups, your sewing friends, okay? Make sure that you um, share that. Comment with any questions that you might have and Hawk or Ellen will share them with me. Hawk is here again doing all the filming. We've changed a few things, so we have a new light by the sewing machine, which will hopefully help a lot, thanks to um, one that I had gotten from uh, Daylight Company. So they're the ones who provide the upper light and now the sewing machine light. So they are wonderful, and I absolutely love them. And we actually had the Slimline light and just today remembered that we had it and we were using it elsewhere in the house. So um, we brought it in over and we'll be using it on the sewing machine today. Okay, so hopefully this will help so you guys can see even better. Um, so there we go. So new things. Um, the fabric that we're working with today, I'm going to try to remember the name. I think it's called Ribbon of Hope. You guys, if you've watched this more than once, you know I'm terrible with the names. I have such a hard time with it. Okay, so I'm going to bring this out for you. Um, so this is one of our new digital cuddles. Okay. And um, it has the little pink ribbons on it for um, breast cancer awareness. Okay, and then it has some cute little flowers and stuff on it. I like it because it has the, um, the breast cancer motif, whatever, with the, uh, with the ribbon, but it has like the floral is the more prominent feature, which I really like. So super cute, great colors, this lovely pink, the blue, and sort of this corally salmon. Would you call that? What color would you call that? Coral. Coral. It's very pretty. Very pretty. So we're going to use this today for the outside of the pillow. The one that I made, the sample that I made, I used... Obviously, I used this fabric, okay, and then I made it with a little um, Velcro, if I can get that open, okay, and then it has a cotton pillow inside. So we're going to do both of those today, um, and I'm going to show you how I did that, okay? All right, so let's get started. I saw some things, okay. Um, all right, so I've got my fabric, and I also have some cotton fabric. So we're going to start with the pattern in the inside pillow and make that first, Okay, so I'm gonna move this aside. So when you download the pattern, um, it's gonna look like this, okay? So if you get Laura's pattern, it's different. She does it on uh, in two pieces and I did it in one, um, just so we can get it on one paper for you. Um, but I'm gonna show you how, you're gonna, how you deal with it at that point, all right? So we've got the pattern, I'm gonna print it out 100%. I've got some instructions, just some very basic instructions here and the pattern, okay? So then once I've gotten the pattern, I've got it cut out this is where it gets a little bit tricky, is that this is actually three, three, three pieces in one. Okay, so you've got your whole heart, and then we have 
with your whole heart. It seems perfect right now. Okay, and then we have a top heart. Okay, and then if I fold it here, I've got the bottom heart. Okay, so it's actually the three separate pieces in one piece. All right, and I'm gonna show you how we deal with that. But first, I'm gonna color code them so you can kind of see what I'm talking about and we can keep it um, in check while we're going. All right, so the top piece I'm going to outline in the yellow just so we can see what I mean by this top piece. Okay, so it tells you here the top part. Okay, so this is the cutting line for the top part. Okay, so that's the top piece, and this is the bottom piece. Okay, so if you get confused by this, what you can do is you can print your pattern out, print it out like this, cut it once here, print it out again, and cut it here. And then you'll have two separate pieces that look like that. Okay, so if it gets confusing for you, that's the way to do it. And then you can have all the pieces, but you have them all in one. Okay, so when I'm doing the inside piece, I'm gonna actually make that out of two full hearts because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stuff that and that's gonna be the inside of the pillow. So the way that the pillow is designed is so that um, after surgery, it kind of like tucks up under the armpit and um, protects the, the surgery site. Okay, so that there can be some irritation and the cuddle is really good for that. So, um, like I said, I've made it and had really good feedback from the people who've gotten them um, because this fabric is so nice and soft. But we want it so that it's cleanable. Um, so I made it with the cover and with the inside. Okay, so we're gonna make that inside piece with the cotton and then that can be taken out and then the outside piece washed. All right, so that's like the pillow insert is what we're making right now. Okay, if you have any questions, please ask. Okay, so now I've got my pattern. I'm gonna lay it on my fabric. This is some very old Thomas Knauer fabric from I don't even know how many years ago that I had in my stash. But I liked it because it has a little pink circles on it. We're just gonna get right ahead of that. What's up with those magnets? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, so these are the magnets. So this is the DIY style board. Just so you guys know, has little magnets. If you don't have magnets, you can use weights or you can use pins. Um, with the cuddle, um, I'll do it once with the magnets and I'll do it once with um, just the tracing and show you how to do it, okay? So then I'm just gonna cut right around this. So this would be one that if you were not comfortable with using a rotary cutter for cutting curves, you could absolutely just trace this out and then cut it with your scissors. Okay, you just wanna pin it together really well. Okay, this is a, um, a 45 millimeter, so it's not as easy to get good little curves. If you were using like a 24, I think is what the smaller one is, it would work a little better, but that was okay. All right, it's just so fast. <laughs> that's, that's the whole key there. Okay, so now I've got two hearts. Okay, a little bit of something on it. I've got two hearts, I'm just gonna lay them right sides together. Okay, and I'm gonna pin this a few times and we're gonna sew around the edge. Okay, so I just want these to lay fairly neatly. If you are having a um, harder time, especially with the cuddle, it can be a little difficult, is that you might wanna make um, like a little mark, a little notch to keep it in check. Uh, because we're sewing with cotton, we don't have to pin very much, which is great. But I am going to use the same trick that I use when I'm working with cuddle, and I'm going to mark myself a little gap. Well, if my pin would work, let's see. Maybe this one will work. There we go. Nope, that pen doesn't work yet. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to make a little mark so that when I come back around here, I know to stop. I'm going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. If you want to, you can always add a little bit or you could just do like a 3 8 seam allowance and that would work too. Okay, it wouldn't affect the size of it too much because the quarter inch can be a little difficult. This would be um, a good project to practice that on now. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to sew around. You can stay on that side for right now because this is going to be just a quick little seam all the way around. So I am, I'm sewing with my stretch needle because I'm not changing it right now. Um, 
and it will work fine. I'll show you how it works. Um, it's easier to sew the wrong fabric with a stretch needle than it is to sew it with a universal needle. <coughs> Excuse me. These straight stretches, I can go pretty fast. I'll be more careful around the curves. Okay. Get that to flatten out a little bit. Okay, so we're just gonna sew all the way around back to where I got the other piece or the other the other mark. Okay. So this cotton can be anything. I picked a pattern for this one. For the other one that I made, I just used a regular cotton, just a plain, plain white uh, cotton in it. Uh, we had Vicky from, I think she's from Ohio. I think Vicky's from Ohio. Um, uh, she emailed and was telling me that at the hospital, because these are something you can make for the hospitals, um, that the hospital that she made them for had asked them to be 100% cotton. So if you want to make these for a charity sort of project, make sure that you are asking if they need it to be 100% cotton or if you could do the cuddle cover. Um, the nice thing about doing the cover is that you can actually just take it off and then you have the cotton pillow, okay? My little, okay, cut it off. I did the little, the little L shape. I'll show you on the next one better, okay? So I sewed all the way around the sky, and now I'm just going to clip the curves a little, okay? So I don't have my pinky shears up here, but if I did, this would be a place to use it. So I'm just going to chop some little V's in here, okay? And that's really because the cotton won't bend well enough to get the um, the curve up here to actually be round. So I'm going to clip it just a little bit. When we're doing this with the cuddle, you'll notice that I won't have to clip these V's because the cuddle just kind of bends and moves with it because it is a knit fabric. Okay, I'm also going to clip these, but this one I'm just going to clip in. So this is a convex, is that true? Convex? Like this curve, you're just going to clip in the outer curves, you're going to clip these, okay? And it just depends on how, because how the fabric will move when it turns the other direction. Okay, I'm going to make sure I caught that. Yep. Sometimes when I'm sewing quickly, I don't catch everything. All right. This is when I need one of those little notch cutters. When we did the um, retreat from home a few weeks ago, that was one of the things they asked if you had in a scavenger hunt. I don't know if anybody has one out there, but they're a fun little tool that you like chink and it'll clip out right a little V. It's the best thing, but I don't have one. See, I have another reason to buy something. Okay, <laughs> like I need another sewing tool, but I do because I don't have a notch cutter. Okay, all right, so I also cut out the little bottom here. Okay, I cut that little V right out of the center bottom so that it can flip. All right, so I'm gonna turn this inside out. I'm gonna clip actually a couple more over here because I see that there's still some curve happening. And wherever there's curve happening, it's gonna wanna sit funny if I don't clip it. So I'm just gonna turn this inside out. Okay, if I were wanting to be really careful and neat with this, I would go ahead and press this, but I'm actually just gonna kinda finger press it and push my finger out along this seam to get that to work right. And that one I did a smaller seam, so I did a two on that one, or 2.5 I think is what I did. Yep, 2.5 stitch length. So you could do a two or 2.5 on this with the cotton to make it a stronger, stronger seam. And in the uh, cotton, that's kind of important to do. All right, so there we go. So there's my little heart, and I'm gonna stuff it real quick, okay? So I'm using the Royal Silk. See if you can get that without too much sheen on it um, because that's the one I like best. Okay, so uh, we've talked about it lots of times before, but I'm gonna talk about it again, is that there is a difference between your polyfills. So the polyfill that you're probably used to seeing <coughs> is this stuff here. Okay, so this is the regular, the original polyfill that you can find everywhere. Um, super, not generic because it's Fairfield, but um, it's, you know, it's the, it's the norm. It's what a lot of people have. A lot of stores carry that. And, um, and it works perfectly fine, but what I found is that it can clump, and the Fairfield Royal Silk does not clump. 
and I really, really like it a lot. So it's really good for this because it's nice and soft. So I really prefer it for my stuffed animals. We used it, we used the regular polyfill last week for the pumpkins because I wanted them to be harder. And this one I want to be softer. So I'm gonna use the Royal, uh, yeah, the Royal Silk in here. And I'm just gonna get it to a point that I feel like it's probably enough. If this were a project you were doing for yourself or someone who was um, close to you, you could check with them and see, you know, how, how stuffed do you want it? How thick do you want it? Um, I feel like that's kind of a, a personal, personal choice is how squishy it's going to be underneath your arm. This is also one that can be turned and used across the front for um, seat belts and she shows you, uh, Laura shows you in her video how to use it that way too. So do check out her video. She has a whole bunch of tutorials, um, sewing tutorials that are really good. All right, a little bit more. As with all stuffing, there's, it's amazing how much you can actually get in these things. And I'm not gonna stuff it very hard at all, just to fill it up and keep its shape. Okay. All right. Get that all stuffed in there. So one of the things too about the Royal Silk is that it's nice because you don't have to like do the kind of tear apart thing so much. I can just shove it all in here and it will stay nice and not be clumpy. Okay. All right. Ta-da. Look at that. Okay. So I'm going to get the rest of this. Stick it inside. And now, because I'm going to use this on the inside, got stuffing everywhere, I'm just going to pop this so that my seam kind of pulls to the inside, okay? And then I'm going to pin it, and I'm going to sew that shut right along here. That's just pulling out. Now I have to redo it. <laughs> so much stuffing. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to have to kind of squish it down so it'll fit underneath there because there's some puff here, but I think we'll be okay. Okay, so I'm just going to stick this right under here. Let's see if we can. You're not going to be able to see much because i got a lot of puff going on here. You want to try to come around? <laughs> All right. <laughs> New and different. Okay, so I'm going to switch it to a zigzag because I want to try to make sure and catch everything. Okay. And that way, if it sort of shifts, if I do a zigzag, it has more chance of actually catching it. Okay, let's see. Ta-da. Okay, so I just zigzagged it shut. You could do a little straight stitch. It's just the quick and easy way of doing it, but you can absolutely hand sew that shut, and that's what I did with the other one, okay? We're just being fast for here. All right, so I'll smush it around. Get my pillow nice, okay? So nice and soft and squishy, okay? So really super bendable, easy, and comfortable, all right? So you could leave it at this point. I would hand sew it if you're gonna leave it at this point, but you could leave it at this point and use it just as the cotton, um, or we can make the cover. So let's make the, um, the cuddle cover, and we're gonna do that a little bit funky. As always, we always do things a little funky. All right, so I've got my fabric. And I have enough here. I'm going to do this on the fold. So a lot of times when I'm working with the cuddle, I don't do it on the fold. And you'll notice that. Digital cuddle is super duper thin. Let me show you that. Okay, so the digital cuddle is, is thinner. I think it's only a two millimeter, one and a half. It's, it's thin. So that's how we get like the sharper images on it is because the nap isn't quite as long. But that means that I can work with it a little bit differently, including putting it on a fold and having it not be too thick to cut it. Um, so it works out pretty well. All right. So I want to make sure that I'm using my fabric judiciously. Okay. So I'm going to put this on here and I'm just going to trace this, see if my pen will work like I want. Oh, it is. Okay. I'm going to trace around this. So if you don't have fancy magnets, this is what we can do. Okay. So we're just gonna trace all the way around it. Okay, at this point, we're gonna pin it. Oh good, I do have scissors up here too. I'll show you how to do it with scissors. Let me grab those really fast. Okay, these are my, oh, these aren't my two honking huge ones. Okay, 
I have bigger ones downstairs. Okay, these are the um, Kai 7250s, and I love these. These are actually my very, very favorite scissors to use. Um, so I'll show you that really quick. Here's the number. Okay, so these are the scissors that I really like. The reason I like these is because they're, um, they have a little serration on them, and they're a really nice long blade. See, I use them. <laughs> okay. So they grab the fabric really easily and they cut like butter. If you use Kai's, then you know, they're kind of yeah, top of the line. Super good scissors. All right, so once I've cut it, I want you to notice though how I pinned it. And I pinned it outside of where I wanted to cut it so that it sort of holds it in place the double layers a lot better. So I found that if I pin it outside, then I cut inside, it will hold it better than if I pin inside and try to cut along this edge. It gives it too much movement here and then I don't cut straight, okay? So I've got my one piece. This is for the front. And now I need to cut my fancy back pieces, which are the top and bottom hearts, okay? So let me do that, so I'm gonna fold it in half again. How much fabric did you start out with? Um, just a scrap of it. Um, <laughs> we said in the pattern a half a yard. Yeah, and a half a yard will work totally fine. You should be able to get two pillows, I think, out of half a yard. Okay, because it needs to be, let me see, so if you were doing scraps, it would have to be, this thing is backwards. Um, so 12 inches by 18 inches for each part of the pillow. So. Yeah, so 18, if you do a half a yard, if you do a half a yard of fabric, you'll be able to get two full pillows out of it. Yeah, okay, so good, make me do some math. <laughs> All right, so now I've got this piece, which is the funky piece, okay? And so I need to cut this one and I need to cut this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a cut first. Okay, actually I'll show you both ways of doing it. This is like the um, not as safe way of doing it. <laughs> because it's really easy to chop your paper. I need to get that creased along the line better, sorry. Okay, so I just wanna make sure I have enough back there. I'm really good at not making sure about that. Okay, so I'm gonna use my little magnets and I'm gonna cut across the top. So this is the part that I was saying, like it's really easy to chop that right off and then if you do, you just tape it back together. But I'm gonna put my little ruler here Okay, so now I have a cut line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this back up. I'm gonna put that line across there. Make sure that's right, yep. Okay, and then, I can feel it, where is it? There it is. Okay, and then I can cut this piece. Okay, so there's my bottom heart. Now my top heart, I've already got a line cut, which is great. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put this on the line. So this is my top heart that I'm cutting. So I need this line to go on there. And I'm putting this one up against the fold. Okay, if anybody's super confused, let me know. It's not too hard. I just wanna make sure I'm catching. Looks like I'm gonna go off just the tiniest bit there. And then I'm just gonna cut around this. All the way. All right, and then I have my top piece, okay? So hopefully that all made some sense. So I've got my top piece, which you can see, goes on there. Okay, and then my bottom piece is here. So if you, like I said, if you need to, when you have the pattern, if you want to cut it out on here and then print it out again and cut here, you totally can, but you can also use it just like this with one piece of pattern, okay? So I've got my top, my front, and I've got the bottom heart and the top heart, all right? So now what we need to do is put a little hem in here and put some Velcro on. Um, you don't have to do the Velcro and the Velcro makes it um, a little bit stiff. So there are some pros and cons to the Velcro. So the Velcro, um, and this is actually just off-brand hook and loop tape, um, it makes it stiffer here because of that 
being in here. So this is now going to be, could be a sensitive part, so it would definitely need to go away from the body, okay? Um, but it does hold it together and makes it so that the pillow stays, because otherwise what happens is this wants to sort of gap apart. So the hook and loop tape keeps it in place and keeps it a little bit um, of a better shape, but make sure that when we're putting this on, we're gonna do the soft side down here so that if it should get into the wrong position here, this soft tape is what will hit me and not this, okay? Because that, that hook part is not comfy. All right, so let's do that. So a couple weeks, we, weeks ago, we talked about this cool um, wonder tape <laughs> Sorry, I got rid of the dust, okay, that I like so much, all right, which is this stuff here. Okay, so Wonder Tape is from Dritz, and it's just a double-sided tape that I can use on here to um, put up my hem. Okay, so we need a half-inch hem. So I'm going to put this on here, and this is only a quarter of an inch, so I'm going to have to double it. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball that, all right. So I just put the tape down, just push it on real hard, make sure it's stuck really well, and then I'm going to come back and pull it up. Okay, so I always use a fingernail to kind of grab it, make sure that it's caught down, and then I'll peel that all off. Okay, so I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to eyeball it and bring it over, but you could absolutely measure it. Okay, so there's about our half inch seam allowance. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one and fold it the other direction. Okay, so I'm gonna put the tape on here, put it right along the edge, get it sealed down really nice and tight. Okay, so again, get that on there. And then I can pull this up. If I can get to the end, it'll be better. There we go. Okay, we can get that stuck down. Pull that off. And then I'm just gonna fold this over about a half an inch. All right. Okay. So there we go. So there's our hem. Now we're not going to leave it like this completely, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tack on my Velcro. Um, you could you could sew it and then do your Velcro. Either way would work. Okay. And um, so the Velcro that I bought is uh, three quarters of an inch is what they had. And so I really want it to be a half an inch. So we're actually just going to chop it off and see if that'll work. Because I did put the three quarter inch in the other but it's too wide and I don't like it. So I'm chopping off some. So here's half inch, okay? And we wanna make sure that the soft is going on the outside, okay? So when this gets put together, the top is gonna to overlap the bottom. So I want this soft stuff to be on the side that's gonna face out. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on here. Okay, so again, I can use my little tape hold it in place. If you've ever tried to sew Velcro, you know you cannot pin this stuff. <laughs> it's pretty horrible, so this Wonder Tape definitely works to hold it in place. You can also use Wonder Clips to hold it where you want it to be. All right. We're doing okay out there? Yeah. No no <clears throat> burning questions that we've seen yet? Yeah, just what the, what you mentioned earlier, that, that notch cutting like mm -hmm. almost like a hole punch yeah. device, mm -hmm. and you can't remember what the name of the brand is by any chance. Oh no, I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. I've never had one. I just know that they exist. Yeah. They're um, generally used for garment makers, like for um, like professionals, um, and yeah, like pattern makers. And I am not that yet. Okay, so I've got this one on. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put the other one on as well. Okay, so the way that I figure out where it's going to match, so I'm going to put this on. I'm not going to press it real hard because I don't want it to stick too much. What did I do with my Wonder Tape? I just had it. There it is. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to put that on the back of this. If I were smart, I would put it on before I stuck it on here. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to pull this off. 
carefully because this is just stuck on with Wonder Tape too. Okay, but I want to get this Wonder Tape stuck on here pretty good, which I can only do if I push hard, and I didn't want to push it hard against that. So, go ahead and get that off. Put that gently in place. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is a little bit funky. Okay, so this is how we make sure that they are um, the right size. So I want my top heart to go down first. So we're putting these right sides together because this is how we're going to sew it later. All right. And then this one is going to go underneath. So I'm going to just align it with the heart that it's sewing to. Okay. So now these should be just about the same size. Perfect. Okay. So it ended up being right along the edge, which is great. But that's how I don't measure it perfectly, is I just try it out first. Okay. So now let's go over. We will sew it on the sewing machine. And I'm just going to sew a big square in place. And then I'll actually sew the, um, the rest of the rest of the hem so that it's in place. All right. So come on around. All right. Okay, so I've got, um, I'm working with, obviously, with the um, Baby Lock Crescendo today. I've got my 9014 stretch needle in there and polyester thread. And I'm just going to do a straight stitch. And I'm just going to bump it up to a three so that it will come through a little bit faster. Okay. And I'm going to clean my glasses with some Cuddle because, actually, if you didn't know, Cuddle is a great glasses cleaner. Okay. So I can see while I'm sewing. All right, so I'm gonna do a little lock stitch here. And then I'm just gonna sew all along this little edge. Okay, and you'll see I've got, you know, I've got the dual feet on. If you have a walking foot, you're gonna wanna use it for this too because it's a lot of, um, it's cuddle. I'm gonna do another couple stitches. Um, it's cuddle and Velcro. So it's, it's some thickness. We just wanna make sure I catch that end. Okay, and you'll notice when it's sewing, um, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. Do you guys hear like the little click, 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 click? And it sort of sounds like it's wrong, like there's something wrong with it. And at first it kind of scared me and then I realized it's just the, um, it's puncturing through the plastic of the Velcro is what that noise is. So don't panic. Just keep sewing, you'll be okay. All right, so I've got that sewn. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here, and I'm going to get that sewn in place. Okay, and I'm just doing it, I don't even know, 16th of an inch from the edge or something. I got that too close to the edge, and I can't get it off now. Did one stitch too many, forward and then backward. Okay, so sometimes I get a little bicky. All right, I'm just gonna go around this. Okay, so you can see I'm really close to the edge on this because I'm just trying to catch it. Okay, I just need to hold it in place. And it's not going to get a lot of wear because honestly, like this isn't going to have to get undone and redone all the time as if it were on like, you know, Velcro on shoes or something. Okay, okay so I'm going to be funky and I'm going to sew it out from here. Oh no, because I need to sew the other part. Never mind, I need to sew the bottom, not that top. Talk to myself. Sorry guys. Okay. <laughs> I was like, don't worry, she does it all the time. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just going to sew right across here. This is at 3 8 And I'm just actually going to go across what I sewed before, which you don't have to. You could just totally do it from the end. So you could totally hear the difference there. It sounds super weird when it's going over the Velcro. Okay. So now I've got my whole hem sewn and the, uh, the Velcro is sewn in place. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing here and do that little hem across the bottom. Just to keep that nicely in place. We'll 
fun did something funky back here oh no it really did something funky oh can I, can you move yeah. hold on back up. thanks because it like sucked it inside of it which right, i've I'm never around to the other side okay oh no guys now we have like two cells to redo things Well, I've never seen it do that yeah, before. Yeah, it's never done this before, ever. And I can't really keep sewing until I take it out, so. <laughs> Sorry, little machine. Sorry. <laughs> it was like, maybe that was too much, Teresa. <laughs> maybe you should be more careful. <laughs> so when I tell you to, to hold the tails of your thread, you should also hold the tails of your fabric so that your walking foot doesn't have your... Digital dual feed doesn't have to eat it. Sorry, little machine. All right. Okay. Goodness, that was crazy. Okay. So now what I'm like, guessing. Yeah, I feel like you're look at, like part of a, a pit crew. It happens <laughs> so fast. <laughs> but look at this. It's like kind of stretched out, but not bad. Look at that. It didn't really torque it too bad at all. That's great. Thanks, little machine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, now that we're here, I can just go back over here and finish the very end. Okay, and then do a little, um, whatever that's called. <laughs> I can't remember what, like, that totally befuddled me. I'm like, what is it that I'm doing now? Lock stitch. That's what I did. Okay. All right. So now we've got it. <laughs> we're back on a three millimeter stitch, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Once we moved, so I just bumped it up just a little bit. Yeah, for the cuddle, I bumped it up just a little bit. You can absolutely leave it on the smaller one, but the bigger one feeds through faster. And your machine may need to bump it up just to feed through. Okay, all right. Well, that's not terrible for all that craziness that just happened. Okay, so now I've got the bottom of my heart, top of my heart. Put it back together, just the way I laid it out a second ago. Okay. So I'm going to lay this on here, right sides together, then I'll put my bottom on here and I'm going to make sure that these match, okay, and I'm going to pin it. So if it's a little bit short, it's totally fine because all that's going to do is fill out once we stuff a pillow into it, okay. So I'm going to kind of manipulate it so that it is where I want it to be, that those match up at the end. And then I'm going to just do some pinning around the edges, okay? Because this is um, the digital cuddle, it's a thinner cuddle, so I'm not going to need to worry quite so much about it moving on me. It shouldn't move too badly at all, okay? I'm going to try to get these two sections pinned together carefully because I want those to stay together. But I'm just going to do a little bit of pinning around here, and I'm going to do it parallel because that seems to work pretty well for me. Okay, but I'm not going to pin a lot. So I found that sometimes, um, even on things like this, if I pin parallel to it, it holds down more flat. So it lets me sew a little bit faster. Okay, and whereas like if I put them in um, perpendicular, I have to pin more. So that's the, that's the nice thing about this. Okay. I'm going to get this together. All right, I'm gonna come over here and grab some pins. That was pretty exciting. It the was. whole digital dual fee just ate it. The yeah. question was wondering whether or not that was because the um, the the digital uh, uh, print is uh, a thinner nap. It's thinner, but the other thing is, so what happened, which totally is what happened, is that this is really thin here. So and it comes out to a point. So basically, this came along the the belt of that and because this is a little bit sticky it's stuck to the belt and dragged it inside oh it's the wonder tape. it's the wonder tape because i should have cut that off before i started sewing it so if i'd have done this all right we wouldn't have had that happen and now we know now we know the more you know thanks paul harvey <laughs> okay all right so i think i've got enough pins in there i've just pinned it around the edge i don't have to leave a hole on this so like before we left a little gap on the cotton one i don't need to do that because this is my gap so once i have sewn this all the way around i can just you know i can open this up and we'll turn it inside out that way okay so 
let's do it. And I'm going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance again. Okay. And again, I got it on a three stitch length. So you can up it to as much as your machine needs to feed it through smoothly. Okay. And around these corners, I'm going to need to take it a little bit slower just to get a nice round corner. And then sometimes you're going to need to lift up the foot, do a little shift. Okay. Sew it again. If you've got a, um, a knee lift, this is a great time to use it. Um, if you have a knee lift and are not standing while you sew. Because <laughs> I would love to use my knee lift, but I can't really do it while I'm standing. So I don't. But if you have one, this is curves are the best time for them, honestly. Okay. So I'm just going to work my way around, like I said, quarter inch. And on this one, we're going to be able to just turn this, which is kind of kind of magical thing about cuddle. Okay, and if it don't get my seam allowance perfectly even all the way around, it's A-OK. -okay. We'll just check it and make sure that I caught everything. And if I didn't, we'll go back over it and uh, make sure that we get it. Okay. So you can see I kind of use, you can see my hands and I'm just kind of like, I kind of tug it, pull it, steer it with, uh, with my fingers over there. Get it to go where I want it to go. All right. So I'm going to make sure that that's going to lay down flat by just stopping for a second, fixing it. Stick an extra pin in here. So I can see it wanting to do things that I don't want it to do. So that's how we can control it. Other than hospital requirements, is there any reason why you couldn't do this in a Lux Cuddle? No, no, no reason. Um, the only thing that I would think of would, um, would be, I would choose one that has a, um, a more even longer nap just for comfort. Cause I feel like one that has too much texture might, if you're extra sensitive at that point, you might feel that and it might not be super comfortable. I could be totally wrong. So you could totally do this in a Lux cuddle. Um, I would just make sure that it was something, yeah, really soft and yummy. Which, you know, I mean, which one isn't? <laughs> I have no idea. I think they're all delightful. Um, trying to think which one I, like the rose cuddle, I think might not be the best one to do um, in. But like, if you look back here, like I think this, this one is um, the Sherpa. Yeah, this is Sherpa and that's like super yummy. This one is the Galaxy and it's great. This is Brooklyn and it would be great too. Um, the Hyde. Super cool. I feel like this one, the Brooklyn maybe because of this texture, I can't feel it here really, but I'm not super sensitive. And I feel like if you're at a place where you're really sensitive, this might not be so comfortable. Does that make sense? Like you'd right. feel, you could feel the ridges maybe. Right. Um, the other one is this one here, which is the seal, which everybody loves. Um, and it's super soft and yummy and that'd be a great, a great one for that. Um, and the nice thing about this is that it is totally machine washable. So if it, you know, you're using it on a surgery site, so if there gets some bodily fluids, um, you're just gonna be able to wash it and it's totally fine, um, which is great. So it makes it so that it's a really easy project to do for lots of different, um, in lots of different fabric. And like I said, machine washable, easy to take care of. Okay, so I've just undid the Velcro. I'm stuffing it around. You can see how nicely that does without any clipping. So I didn't clip any of those curves and it's just gonna work perfectly fine. Okay, smoother than the cotton even if, after I clipped it, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Okay, so then I'm gonna come back around here. So here is my heart. All right, so now I've got the two pieces. So I've got the piece that's inside that you could wash this. So just so you know that Royal Silk totally is machine washable as well. Um, but sometimes when you wash, if you've washed batting before or stuffing before, you know, sometimes it can get a little bit clumpy. I haven't washed anything with the Royal Silk because I like it most for stuffed animals. So I haven't washed anything with it, um, but I know it is washable. So you might have to do a little, um, you know, unclumping after you wash and dry it, but it's totally washable and dryable. All right, so we've got the inside heart, which is made out of the cotton and the stuffing. And we're just gonna tuck that in here. I'm gonna stuff it up into the little, Pumps of the heart, the top of the heart first. 
Okay, and you can absolutely, you could just make it out of the cuddle and then stuff that. The reason I wanted to do it out of the two pieces was literally to make it washable. Um, having had pillows of all sorts that need to be washed, I feel like this was one that was definitely gonna need to be. Ta-da, look at that. See, there's my little Velcro and then there's the front, okay? Ta-da, that's it. So like I said, if you wanted to make it out of cuddle, you could do it and then just sew these two, the two hearts together and then just stuff that. Um, I feel like this makes it a little bit more uh, durable. Uh, the people I've known who've needed them and used them and loved them, they haven't used them for very long. So really it is sort of just like a, a keep it clean for a little bit sort of thing. Um, but they're really helpful, I think, um, for a lot of people. Uh, we talked a little bit about asking your hospital what they want or your clinic or your friend or whoever it is that you're going to be giving the pillows to. So make sure that it's something that is um, suitable for them, for what they want. And like I said, there are um, definitely other patterns out there as well that do... Um, that are sort of uh, comforting in other ways, I guess. So there's one that's like sort of like a W shape that will go across the front and there's some different... Um, Jackie just posted one that is a one that goes across the front for the seatbelt. So there's lots of different things that like it's only for the seatbelt. Um, so there's lots of different patterns that are out there. So I really suggest that you um, go find some and check them out and try some different types and see what see what works best for you and the situation. Um, and then make sure you get tested for breast cancer regularly. Okay, um, it happens often enough that we want to make sure everybody stays safe and healthy. Uh, okay, so we have a winner. Today's winner is Doris s of wisconsin so um you are the winner yay so we're gonna we'll send you some fabric i'll send you a copy of the pattern and i'll send you some of the royal silk so you can try that that out and then i'll send you some of the ribbon i think it's ribbon of hope uh fabric that we have here so that you can make your own or make whatever you'd like out of it um i think it's really great fabric and super super duper easy to use you saw the pattern's really easy the fabric is um delightfully easy to use just don't leave the wonder tape on so that it sucks into your machine <laughs> so lessons learned today we learned something new not to do every, every day show. um the other thing <laughs> is kind of funny that i just and probably because i know the fabric well enough that we managed to get the nap and i never did talk about the nap but when you put the pattern on make sure that the nap is going the right way this one happens to be, which is great. Um, <laughs> but the digital cuddle, it won't tell so much, but you will be able to tell just a little bit. So um, make sure you do that. Um, otherwise, we'll be back next week. We're gonna do, we're um, partnering with Sew for Home next week, and we're gonna do a, um, a little blanket. So we're gonna do it out of the, um, the oh, what is it called? Oh no, I left, I lost my brain, it left. I don't know where it went. Um, it's really <laughs> Buffalo check. There we go. It's Buffalo check. I was like, come on, brain, do it. Um, Buffalo check fabric is what we're going to be using next week. And it's super cute. It's super popular. And you can find it in lots of stores. We have a couple of different uh, variations on it. And we're going to show you how to do another, a different blanket next week. Because um, blankets are great. And as we talked about, like, we're starting to get into holiday season and staying warm season. So blankets are going to be perfect. So we'll be back next week. Make sure that you join us. Oh, Hold on. I only texted Buffalo check. Um, <laughs> thanks. Um, make sure that you follow us on Facebook so you can get notifications when we go live. Um, you can also follow us on I Love or join us on I Love Cuddle, which is a Facebook group for uh, other sewists like yourself who like sewing with cuddle and want some inspiration. We get to share our projects on there and it's super duper fun. You can also follow us on uh, Instagram and YouTube as well. So you can find us in all of those places. We'll be back next week. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you being here. Happy sewing.